This podcast will focus on abnormal chromosome number. Abnormalities in chromosome number, you can consider cells that have multiples of 23 would be haploid and diploid, and these would be considered euploid. Other cells that have multiples of 23 would be considered polyploid. A triploid individual, 3n equals 69. A tetraploid individual, 4n equals 92 turns out that maybe 1 in 10,000 live births can be triploid. A few tetraploid live births have ever been recorded. Most polyploid conceptuses are spontaneously aborted, and indeed they may account for 25% of chromosomal abnormalities at conception. Polyploid conceptuses are all incompatible with long-term survival. So how does a polyploid conceptus arise? Well, potentially by polyspermy. Uh, You may have meiotic failure in oocytes or spermatocytes. Why would tetraploidy be much less common? Well, you'd have to think about it and say you've got two independent abnormalities occurring, both on the male side and the female side, so it's really very, very rare. Polyploidy in most human somatic cells is not common, but it does occur regularly in cells of some tissues and organs. So remember that in the epithelial cells that line the urinary tract, you can have polyploid cells. You can even have cells that are two nuclei. So polyploidy is common in epithelium lining the urinary tract. Polyploidy is also common in human liver cells. Here you can see some liver cells that have very large nuclei, for example. An aneuploid cell is not an even multiple of 23 chromosomes. There's a missing chromosome or an extra chromosome. Aneuploidy usually, but not always, involves one chromosome. Autosomal aneuploids are clinically important. They usually arise by meiotic non-disjunction. Autosomal monosomies rarely reach term. As you'll come to appreciate, autosomal trisomies can be fairly common. How do you wind up getting aneuploid individuals? Well, you may have non-disjunction that can occur at meiosis 1 or non-disjunction that can occur at meiosis 2. The diagram on the left shows non-disjunction at meiosis 1. After the first meiotic division, you've got cells that have two copies of a particular chromosome and cells with no copies of that chromosome. So if these were the developing sperm, and then you consider what would happen with a fertilized egg. Here would be two conceptuses that are trisomic for this particular chromosome and two conceptuses that are monosomic for this particular chromosome. Here they're presumably getting the chromosome only from the maternal side. So this would be non-disjunction at meiosis 1. The issue would be that all of the conceptuses would be abnormal. 50% of the conceptuses would be trisomic, and 50% of the conceptuses would be monosomic. On the other hand, if non-disjunction is occurring at meiosis 2, and again you look at the percentage of conceptuses, 50% of the conceptuses would be normal ploidy, 25% of the conceptuses would be trisomic, and 25% of the conceptuses would be monosomic. Now remember, we're looking at the percentage of conceptuses that are normal. We're not looking at the percentages of live births that are normal, because that would be an entire different question. From this example shown on the right, what we can say with general certainty is that monosomic conceptuses don't reach term. So in this case, two-thirds of the live births would be normal, one-third would be trisomic, because the monosomic conceptus would almost absolutely be lost. Now, again, you don't know the question to ask because in many cases, even the trisomic conceptuses would be lost. So really, you might say that in this case, 100% of the live births would be normal, but there may be a lot of pregnancy loss. Here is a karyotype with trisomic 21, so-called Down syndrome. It's represented as 47 
X, Y, because it's a male, with an additional chromosome 21, shown there on the karyotype. Trisomic 21 is the most common aneuploid that's compatible with survival to term occurs in about 1 in 800 live births. You should appreciate that 3 fourths of trisomic 21 conceptuses are lost spontaneously. Down syndrome. 95% of Down syndrome is a result of non-disjunction during gamete formation. A small percentage of trisomic 21 is due to mosaicisms and or translocations. Mosaic trisomy results from a random error during embryonic cell division such that some cells have two copies of a given chromosome and some cells have three copies of a given chromosome and we'll show more about that later. Trisomic 18 is so-called Edwards syndrome, could be represented as 47XY, in this case plus 18 for an extra 18. It's the second most common autosomal trisomy, 1 in 6,000 live births. It's the most common chromosomal abnormality in stillbirths. Individuals born with trisomic 18 usually don't live beyond about a year, and there's no preference as far as whether the trisomic 18s are males or females. Trisomic 13 here represented 47XX because it was a female plus 13. Paytow syndrome, usually 1 in 10,000 live births. Again, usually not a able to survive beyond 24 months. Something you have to be careful about because you'll see examples on YouTube of some of these different trisomies and they can be very compelling and they can really evoke a lot of empathy as you look at them. But understand that some of these trisomics may be results of mosaic individuals, not trisomies in every cell in the body. And some of those mosaics have better odds of surviving than the ones that are full trisomics in every cell. But you also need to understand that even though they show those images on YouTube and they can be very compelling, you've got to understand that some of these trisomies can result in significant burdens on a family. Now here's an interesting chart, and I think people are familiar with this, and it indicates the number of Down syndrome cases per 1,000 live births, and it shows the Down syndrome cases increasing with maternal age. And indeed, autosomal trisomies tend to increase with maternal age because of meiotic non-disjunction. In Down syndrome, there's not much evidence for paternal age effect. So why would maternal age be critical? It may be because the gametes are staying for sometimes decades arrested in meiosis 1, and so there's a greater chance of non disjunction. Understand that the number of Down syndrome cases increases with maternal age, but this is sometimes misleading because there are very many more individuals born with Down syndrome to younger women than to older women, and that's simply because more younger women are conceiving than older women. So you have to be careful what the statistics tell you. And that's what I mean by saying that these data relate to risk but not absolute number. Aging men pass greater numbers of genetic mutations to their children, while women tend to pass a fixed number regardless of their age. And this is a set of data that was actually published in the popular press in Time magazine. And it's showing the number of mutations that accumulate in sperm increases with age, whereas the number of mutations that accumulate in eggs stay relatively the same. And one probably can relate this to the fact that meiosis is occurring in men throughout reproductive life, so there's greater chances that there may be errors in the replication machinery or the DNA repair machinery compared to what occurs in women. Children from older men may have a relatively lower birth weight, there may be more still births, and there are more psychiatric issues, especially with issues like autism or schizophrenia. 
And again, if we think about why that's the case, it's most likely because there's greater likelihood for breakdown in the molecular mechanisms like DNA repair or replication because gametogenesis is occurring throughout a man's reproductive life, whereas gametogenesis occurs early in fetal life in females and is arrested for most of uh, a woman's reproductive life. We can also talk about sex chromosome aneuploidy. So we talk about X chromosome trisomy or even more X chromosomes. These individuals are overtly female. There may be some intellectual disability. You'll see bar body variations and or drumstick variations. We can also talk about XYY chromosome trisomy. Here individuals are male. They may be taller than average. There may be some minor behavioral issues, but generally XY why males have a normal IQ. Kleinfelter individuals are individuals with multiple X chromosomes but with a Y chromosome. They are very tall individuals. They may have a lower but normal IQ range. Now we want to be careful because sometimes people used to talk about XYY and even XXY individuals that may have been prone to criminal behavior. This was postulated because when the studies were first done, they looked at individuals that were in prison. And obviously, if people are in prison, they have criminal behavior. When studies were done in the general population, one found that there really weren't any differences in these sex chromosome aneuploidies in the general population. So have to be careful with how data is interpreted. There's another X chromosome aneuploidy. Turner syndrome is 45X. This is the only monosomy that's compatible with life, but it turns out that 98% of the fetuses that are 45X are spontaneously aborted. Turner syndrome individuals have a very characteristic phenotype with a certain array of malformations. Their IQ range, however, is perfectly normal, and Turner individuals, 45 5X that do survive, function, and lead a normal life. Y chromosome monosomy is an absolutely lethal condition. You have to have at least one X chromosome to have a conceptus that's compatible with life. I think we showed you this slide in a previous podcast showing cells from normal females, XX, showing an individual with two bar bodies, XX, and then with three bar bodies, XXX. So the carrier type here would be 47XXX. The carrier type here would be 48XXXX, with three of the X chromosomes being present as bar bodies. Here's an individual that would be XY, no bar bodies. This individual could also be XO, a Turner syndrome. Here's an individual with the drumstick appendages in neutrophils, three X chromosomes, so the individual would be 47XXX. Here's a normal female, 46XX.